The structure of your EXO system should reflect your business's processes and information requirements. When it comes to finance, you should take into account your key stakeholders uh, and their specific needs. Key stakeholders are likely to include your management team, uh, the board or the directors of your company, uh, your auditors, uh, and the ATO or the IRD. These can broadly be grouped into management reporting, financial reporting, and compliance. Consideration should be given to each of these stakeholder groups when configuring your EXO system. The best reporting tools in the world won't give these stakeholders the information they need if the structure of your EXO system doesn't allow you to capture and categorize your financial data in a way that works for these stakeholders. And that's what this segment's going about. Fortunately, your EXO system can be adapted to meet your changing business requirements. From reconfiguring your chart of accounts to updating your financial reporting, your EXO support partner can assist you to overhaul or fine tune your EXO system's financial structure. And we all know that you know, we've got clients out there that have been using their EXO systems for, for 10 years plus. And, uh, the, and, and over time, um, the needs of the business might have evolved and adapted, um, uh, the, the changing evolution of your, of your business. And so from time to time, it pays to check and make sure that your EXO system is still structured to meet those key stakeholder requirements and then make some tweaks if, if needed. So today, what we're going to be covering is um, looking at your EXO system over and above compliance and financial management, which is kind of what we, we tend to focus on in the day-to-day -day doing of, of our EXO system. Uh, we're going to take a, a look at or get you thinking about who your key stakeholders are uh, and what their needs might be. We're going to um, touch on adapting your EXO system. I'm going to encourage you to, to kind of look at it. your EXO system as this um, tool that can evolve and adapt. It's not rigid, it's not set and sewn. It's never too late to change. Is your chart of accounts up to scratch? We're going to show you the process to go through that you can get started on to make those transitions. And then we're going to look at how to reconfigure your EXO system. So we're going to actually go in and take a look at some of the areas that we can tweak um, and might be some stuff in there that you weren't aware of. Um, let's hope so. And we're also going to look at how we can ensure that your EXO system was set up to capture the transactional information without having to put any additional burden on your, your, um, your data entry operators. And then lastly, we're going to look at how to make sure that we keep your, your EXO financial system in balance. Um, and we're going to look at some cool reporting tools um, that we can use to keep that system in balance without making it a, a, a real headache each month end. So um, each business is, a, uh, is different and the structure of your ERP system should reflect that. The financial information your system is capable of producing is dependent on the structure of the system that receives and stores the data. Today, we're gonna to look at how to align your financial configuration of your EXO system to support your business's strategic goals, as well as supporting the clever use of other technologies like focus reporting. So who are your key stakeholders? Uh, they may well differ from what I've got on this slide. What's important is to structure your EXO system to, to uh, best meet their needs. Having the right framework in place will give access to the right information quickly and efficiently. So, how do we do that? Let's get um, our little EXO system up and running. And I'm just going to bring that across once I find the mouse. So, in terms of looking at and configuring our EXO system, the first starting point is to check if your chart of accounts is up to scratch. And in order to do that, the best way is to actually print off a, a, a list of your full chart of accounts and then sit down with your key stakeholders and work through that, that chart of accounts with them. Fortunately, in EXO, we have a report that does exactly that. Um, and it's there by default. So you don't even need to uh, get anyone to write it for you. So if I run this chart of accounts report, and I'll bring this across in a moment, 
Here it is. This chart of accounts report, the great thing about it is it not only lists out all of your, your general ledger accounts, but it breaks out the sub accounts underneath them as well. So you've got a, a really good view of all of the accounts that have been set up in your system. And um, many of you will know that if you've been using your Exo system for a few years, chances are there's a sub account or three floating around in there that just doesn't get used anymore. So uh, simplifying and streamlining your chart of accounts is a, is a great way to produce a more effective uh, reporting, uh, whether that's natively out of EXO or whether that's through uh, reporting tools like Focus. But there's more to your chart of accounts and your financial structure in EXO than just your chart of accounts. So um, I'm going to launch EXO config. Hopefully the audio quality is okay, folks. Um, I do get accused of talking quite softly, so um, if I'm if I'm not quite loud enough, I'll, I'll, I'll try and lift the volume a little bit. Um, but inside uh, our Exo configurator, we have the ability to manage our general ledger account groups. In this example, and in, in our demo that I'm that I'm working with today. We've got um, three different sales uh, account groups. Uh, we've got three different expense account groups, and then uh, everything else is relatively standard. So uh, we've done a little bit of customization on this database, um, but it, uh, a lot of it is still just standard. And most accounts, when you go in and you look at the, the, the company, you look at the, the database setup, a lot of times the account groups are exactly as it, comes out of the box. No one's invested any time into looking at those GL account groups and, and, and uh, really understanding if that's the, the best grouping for the business needs. One of the other things I wanted to show you, because it's, it's, it's not commonly used uh, and not commonly understood, is uh, within our GL account groups, we also have report codes. And these report codes are a great way of giving you another level of reporting in terms of your financial structure. So if you can uh, imagine your GL account groups as like rich, complex, detailed information that you're managing your exosystem with, and then you want to simplify that a little bit and just bring it back to the bare basics, which is probably how your exosystem was set up in the first place, we can use report codes to do that. If I come up back up to uh, our, my overview, you can see that my three retail sales, uh, sorry, uh, my three sales G, uh, account groups are all categorized as sales income. My three expense account groups are all categorized as expenses under report codes, which gives us, you know, it, it, it kind of lifts us up a level. To kind of explain what I mean by that, uh, I'm just going to flip back to Exo and I'm going to go into reports, general ledger reports, and I'm going to launch my trial balance tree. Now, this is just a way of illustrating what I'm talking about. Um, it, it can, these report groups can be used in all sorts of different reports, including focus reporting, um, but this is just a nice way of illustrating what I'm talking about. So by default in your GL trial balance tree, it pulls it through groups by account group, which is what we were just looking at before. But we do have the option to use report groups or report codes, I should say. So if I select that option and hit load, we can see it's simplified down. And so now we've just got our sales income, We've just got our expenses all consolidated down into just one number. So depending on what your key stakeholders' needs are, we can use um, either rich detail or we can use higher level information. So far, we've looked at our chart of accounts. Uh, we've looked at our GL account groups and we've looked at report codes to allow us to align our EXO data uh, to our stakeholder needs. There are also configuration settings that control how financial data flows through your system. For example, in job costing, we have a profile that determines where the revenue account is derived from. By default, this is set to stock items. Now, we're going to just do a little uh, delve into, into a little bit of job costing here. So for those viewers that 
uh, don't use job costing. Um, hang in there. You'll get some value out of this anyway. So what we're talking about here is how we define the GL account that our revenue goes to. And by default, in EXO, it's driven, driven by the stock item. And so if I go into the details to tab of this stock item, we've got a sales GL code. That code there tells the system, when I sell one of these, this is the bucket to put the money into, the revenue. But that's not the only way that we can determine which sales revenue bucket to put that money into. If I go back to config and I jump into profiles, I think the word I want is general. This profile here allows us, gives us some more options basically. So uh, we can see that you know it says stock item and, and yes it says that's that's the recommended option but trust me I'm a professional I know what I'm doing. Um, if I click on the drop down We've got a couple more options here. We can derive it by job header. And what that means is that within a job, we can define what revenue account the entire job gets posted through to, which is really quite a cool option for, for many people that, that you know, use um, job costing or, or, or you know, work with projects. And you want to have a, a revenue stream, a revenue code for that particular project. Um, this is how you would achieve that. The third option, is, is uh, also very useful. Uh, it's defining our revenue stream by cost type. Now, what that allows us to do is at a transactional level, define which cost type for each transaction entry that goes against a job. Um, and that cost type can determine which GL account to post our revenue into. Um, I'll quickly show you what I mean inside job costing. Um, if I bring up Excel again and don't we all love our favorites menu? Brilliant, brilliant feature within EXO. The advantage of using cost types over stock items is if you've got, um, say, multiple departments or divisions within your company and you want to determine different revenue accounts within your financial structure for those different departments, if you're using stock items, you may need to duplicate or triplicate or quadruplicate your stock items in order to, to change the revenue stream based on the department. And so you have a stock code for one department, then you've got the same stock code for the same, literally the same product for another department. It's a, a big waste of time. By using cost types, we can select which revenue stream that goes to just by selecting the cost type. And we can do some cool stuff around that um, where cost types can be defined by um, the, the job type or can be defined by the job category or, or some other way of, of automating the selection of cost types so it's not a manual selection every single time. So just to show you what I'm talking about here, if I go into a cost type, it's this GL code here. And so this is the revenue code associated to the Outwork um, cost type. Just while I'm uh, talking about cool features in ExoConfig, there is one other profile here I'd just like to touch on. Um, not strictly speaking along the lines of, of our topic for the day, but this is a useful one that not a lot of people know about because it by default is turned off. Um, and this is the, the sub-ledger drill through. So what this profile enables you to do is from a, a stock transaction or a, or a debtor transaction, right mouse click and then drill through to the general ledger batch that's associated with that transaction, which saves a lot of hunting if um, if you don't have this profile turned on. As I said, by default it's turned off, so some people may not be aware of it. Aware of it, because it's a user profile, we can define who gets access to do it and who doesn't. So, just to quickly demonstrate what I mean, if I go into a debtor account. I right mouse, right mouse click on this invoice, I can view GL batch here. And here's the GL batch associated with that transaction. And as I said, that, that applies to, to debtors, creditors, and stock as well. 
Okay, uh, branches and subaccounts. Branches are a tool that allow you to segment your general ledger transactions. Broadly speaking, branches can reflect a physical branch or location, or it can reflect a department from within your business, like marketing, for example. Branches in Excel are fairly well known and commonly used. However, even for those who are currently using branches, it may be worthwhile to confirm that the current configuration best serves the business. Sub accounts similarly give you additional granularity within your main GL accounts. Too few, and your company is failing to capture all the information required by your stakeholders. Too many, and your financial reporting ends up confusing and messy. When a company looks to redesign their chart of accounts, it's usually the sub accounts that, that get overhauled the most. Uh, it's important to seek input from your key stakeholders, as I keep saying, when redesigning sub accounts and branches. Now, as part of this um, segment, I was going to, I, I actually looked at creating a, um, a, a graphic that, that illustrated the, the interplay between branches and sub accounts. And I, I created this thing in Visio and, and uh, the, the reason why I'm not showing it to you is because it didn't go well. So um, what I'm gonna do is paint a mental picture for you um, because it, it's really quite useful to, to, to kind of understand the interplay between branches and, and sub accounts. So if you imagine your sub accounts as, as the columns on a spreadsheet um, and then the branches are the rows and it's where those those two intersect. That's where the, the, the revenue will go for a particular department for a particular uh, either product sold or, or exercise or um, task that you're performing. So yeah, use the use the spreadsheet analogy. I'll paint that mental picture um, rather than actually show you a real picture. An overhaul of your EXO system doesn't necessarily mean you're going to create extra work for those who need to process the transactions within your system. There are things that we can configure and do with an EXO, which will simplify the um, EXO process. I'm just gonna jump back into EXO config. So, and this time, I bring up our branches profile. Now there is a profile that tell, that allows us to define the default branch for a particular group of users. Now what this what this profile does is it, it, whenever a transaction is entered by someone that's associated with these user groups, um, it'll post all those transactions through to the right branch. So they don't need to worry about selecting the correct branch every time they process, process a transaction. Um, if I click through our default user profiles, and I've got them set up under head office and finance and marketing and sales. Um, you may see on the right hand side here that value is changing. So um, our default branch is changing for each one of these user groups. And so we can see I've got branches set up for head office, finance and marketing. So and, and using these kind of tools, we can simplify and streamline the, the transactional entry through EXO. Uh, if you have um, web sales, then we can create a separate branch and a separate user profile for web sales, or alternatively, we can just have it posted through the head office, which is another thing that's commonly done. Okay, the last thing I just want to um, touch on, because it speaks directly to your financial system, is making sure that we've got uh, all our books in balance. So, I apologize for the slide, it's a little bit busy, um, but the, the key thing I wanted to illustrate here is that there's lots of reporting that your partner can produce, your EXO partner can produce to help you um, keep your EXO system in balance. Because we all know people make mistakes. Um, even computers make mistakes. Deadlocks, duplications, and database errors are, are a thing, are a real thing. They're not common, but they can happen, and when they do, there's the potential for your EXO system to get out of balance. Uh, the beautiful thing about your EXO system, however, is that it allows clever support people 
to, to create scripts that will identify any areas and then allow you to, to make the adjustments to bring the, your exosystem back into balance. It's important that you reconcile your ledgers regularly. Um, month end is the ideal time before you've closed off your books for the year. Do you run your reconciliation reports? Find any er errors, get them fixed, and then you're good for another month. All right.